Hi, and welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're gonna check out Lubuntu 21.10. Well, I decided to take a look at something a lot more lightweight. I figured someone might be trying to run some older hardware, or maybe you really just want to maximize your system to the nth degree. I was looking at this LXQT desktop environment, wanted to check it out and found an Ubuntu spin with that desktop environment. So we're gonna take a look at it, see what it offers, see how light it actually is, see how full featured it can be. Maybe you and I both will learn something here. So let's take a look at their website. Welcome to the next universe. And it says here, Lubuntu is a complete operating system that ships the essential apps and services for daily use. Office applications, PDF reader, image editor, music and video players, etc. And they have their the Discover Software Center as well. Talks about being Ubuntu based and compatible, fast and lightweight. You get it. It shows you can install it anywhere, including a Raspberry Pi. And I went ahead and put it into a virtual machine with a gig of RAM and two cores. And let's just take a look at this. I'll go ahead and maximize. This and we'll go through the install process, take a look at a couple things once it's installed. Maybe if you're looking for a lightweight desktop environment, this is for you, whether you've already running Ubuntu or some other Linux distribution, this may be your jam. Let's find out. I am going to go ahead and install, and I'm guessing this is gonna be almost exactly like the Ubuntu Calamaris installer, and guess what? It is. Next. Next, next. I think I'm gonna go ahead and have that because I'm only using a gig of RAM. I wouldn't say it's suggesting, but it's defaulting to swap to file. So let's go ahead and leave that in there. And it's going to install. I will go ahead and speed it up. See you on the other side. Okay, all done, and that was uh, pretty quick. Let's restart. Actually, it was very quick. Let's restart. This is what the LXQT desktop environment looks like in Lubuntu when you first boot in. LXQT stands for Lightweight QT or Qt Desktop Environment. And, you know, right now, I wouldn't notice this being some lightweight looking environment just from the desktop, but you get to the menu here. It's simple, but effective situations here. Now I'm just, I'm just reminding you that I only gave this virtual machine one gigabyte of RAM and two cores. So it's like a dual core, one gigabyte system here. And the file size of the ISO was 1.9 gigabytes. So it had a lot of things to install, but not that much. And going through here in your basic menu, you've got stuff ready to go that you're used to. Um, Bluetooth, Firefox, they've got LibreOffice installed. They've got K3B, VLC. So it looks like there is some KDE elements in this because of the Qt stuff. KDE Partition Manager right there, the Qt Terminal, Preferences, Super cool about LXQT. This is version 0 0.17.0, very nice. We've already got virtual desktops here, which you probably know by now how that works, but desktop one and desktop two and desktop three. And this is their file manager, okay. When I hover over what the file manager name is, because once again, I'm unfamiliar with um, LXQT, and it says PCManFM-QT file manager, and then in parentheses, file manager. Okay, I think we'll just call it file manager, but PCManFM-QT file manager is the name. You know, it is very straightforward with a, a retro feel to it that feels quite nice uh, visually. I mean, everything is quite 
So but once again, one gig of RAM. I know I'm not accessing a lot of files, but I am just flabbergasted on how this feels already. It feels like I'm on a really full featured desktop as far as what's available here. And I am going to do that. They've got a calendar right here. They've got, looks like notifications right here. It's letting me know that uh, there's no battery on my virtual machine, which is so true. Um, there's your networking, a clipboard. Welcome to the, welcome to the Q-Lipper. I'm guessing Clipper, Clipper, like clipboard, Clipper. Say that 10 times fast. That's great. Audio, basic, one fader. Nothing wrong with one fader. It's not showing any devices attached, which is just fine because there are none. Right clicking on the desktop lets you create another folder on the desktop or a blank file. Paste, you know the deal. You can sort things that are on the desktop by file name and stuff. Show hidden files, hide desktop items. Okay, now they're hidden. Bring them back, easy. Create launcher from guessing an application and desktop preferences, let's go there. Looks like the fonts you can change, the icon size you can change. Let's apply, let's make these bad boys big. There they are. Um, maybe not that big. Let's go like this big. Fine. Here we go. Background. Select background color or browse a wallpaper image file. They have a couple here to choose from. What are you? Let's apply. I'm guessing that's some sort of cheetah or something. I don't know. Let's see what this one looks like. But, you know, a little different, an extra menu piece there to get to where you're wanting to go. <laughs> Doesn't like my little scroll wheel there. Outstanding looking desktop. Now in the menu over here, this menu is basic and simple in a wonderful way. You've got some accessories here, KCalc. There's that, this name just is awesome. I think I'm, I, it's growing on me every time I read it. PC Man FM-QT File Manager, or Qt File Manager. Love it. That's cool, dude. You got Vim, all of these pieces here are exactly what you need. And check it out, it's tough. Let me kill what I have running here. I actually have Firefox running. Close tabs and I have PC man, <laughs> PC man, <laughs> FM dash cute file manager. I don't know why that makes me laugh. It's cool, I actually honestly like it but it's so long. Okay, uh, let's run HTOP, shall we? I'm gonna go to a terminal. I'm guessing finding a terminal will be simple. I wonder if there's like, um, I see it here. Qt terminal drop down. Let's see if that's with like F12, yeah. There's another terminal that opens and closes like this with F12. You can pull it down nice and simple. Looks like it's even a tabbed terminal as well. That's cool. All right. So I'm going to type in HTOP. And on this system, we have 396 megabytes being used. There is 130 megabytes of the 512 megabytes used on the swap partition. And absolutely nothing is buzzing either of the cores of the virtual machine CPU. Uh, I'd say a lot of machines could run this. That is cool. Really love that and check this out. Boop, I'm done with you. I'm not done with you. All right, I'm gonna kill you. Are you sure you wanna exit? Yes, I do. Let's see if it comes back. You have to launch it. I bet we'd have to set it up as one of our startup devices. That's no problem, but here we go. Let's check out what's here. We also have software sources, your screensaver, printers. Um, do you see anything here that um, additional drivers? Let's check that out. No additional drivers available. Cool, no problem with me. This is a virtual machine. I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card on that virtual machine. 
Okay, on this Muon package manager, it's reminding me a little bit of Synaptic package manager. Um, looks like this would be a great way for you to grab different modules and different builds of kernels and XFCE uh, if you want to change this desktop environment. But also, we have the Discover Software Center, which is once again the KDE Software Center. You can see me struggling to pull that window the way I want it to be. This is showing 184 packages that need to be updated. That's cool with me. And then I'm going to search for Caden Live. There's Caden Live. You can install from Snap or you can install directly from the repos. If you want, let's take a look at your settings here. You've got your software sources, Snap. There are ways and I've done it. I did it with my wife's Ubuntu install on her laptop. There is a way to make it where Flatpak is what you can use. And if you don't like Snap, it's not a problem. You can use App Images too. Wonderful, but I am going to install Caden Live. I am not gonna lie, KDE is the desktop environment that I use daily. And seeing some of these applications is exciting to me because these are the ones that I like. And if I really want to minimize the resources that I'm using on my system for one reason or another, so far this LXQT is great. Caden Live just booted right up. Remember, virtual machine, one gig of RAM, two cores, and that went and booted right up. This is straightforward, guys. This is great if I wanna pull up a spreadsheet. No problem. There's a spreadsheet. It's amazing, it popped right up. You know, at least at its default state, uh, not a bunch of window decorations, not a bunch of configuration pieces on some of this. Let's see here, let's configure the panel. Let's see what you can do. I can at least change the alignment and the position. I can put it up at the top, cool. I can put it at the right, that's cool. Um, but if I wanted to do that and align it center or align it to the right, I can do that. There also is this widgets button which allows for some quick launches, task manager, volume control, system trays, you know the deal, world clock. That is cool. I can add a CPU monitor. I think I will do that. I will add the CPU monitor and there it is going, you ain't got nothing for me. Configure CPU monitor. Cool. Let's add another one. Let's add the color picker. And how do I use the color picker? Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna select this color right here on this gradient. And then the code is right here. That is simple, direct, and to the point. Way to go, LXQT and the Lubuntu team. If you watched my video uh, yesterday, I had a frustrating experience with another distribution. You can check it out. But it feels so refreshing to experience a distribution that knows what it is. Configuring this panel, I'm gonna put it back to where it was. It does feel natural to be down there. I can make this bigger for those of you guys who are on a phone and make the icon size bigger so that you can see a little better. And there it is. Guys, there's not much to do here except for marvel at the resources that it is not using, the availability and full featured nature of this, and the options with the Ubuntu. This is um, Ubuntu 22 uh, points. Oh. All right, this, I mean, this is Lubuntu 21.10, which is Ubuntu's newest, um, most recent release. The window manager is OpenBox, which some of you are familiar with. This just feels really great. I'm actually, oh, man, I actually am really liking this to the point that wanting to have this on my desktop for my daily use 
is something I would consider. I need to spend more time with this and check it out. KDE Connect is here. KDE Connect is super cool. This is super cool. It's saying that my uh, actual desktop is not a trusted device right now, and that's okay. Um, this is just cool that it has KDE Connect. It has Firefox. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up a bunch of tabs. I'm gonna open up Caden Live. I'm gonna open up, I don't know, more than what you would normally use, and then we're gonna see how much resources is being used. If you are using a low resource, computer, I'm going to be able to tell you that you need to use Lubuntu because this is slick. I don't know if I'm on the high from all the frustration yesterday or what. There's my tech channel. So we got this. And can I yes, copy? And I'm going to paste and go. And I'm going to paste and go. Uh, we're kind of getting a little, hoo, hoo, hoo. let's see, paste and go. Let's take a quick check at this right quick. Let's take a quick check. It is starting to go, what are you doing to me? And you can see here my little monitor going, ah! If you want to do more than three tabs, on the Ubuntu, on one gig of RAM, don't. There we go. In fact, it even crashed Firefox. <laughs> okay. So we'll say three. Sitting here, loaded, loaded, loaded. I crashed again. Okay. Let's try two of them. Let's try two, shall we? Two tabs. Two tab, tab, tabs. And we are going to type in a stop. Okay, and there it is. Your ability to multitask is going to be limited. The swap partition is maxed out along with 700, almost 700 megabytes worth of memory. The CPUs uh, were working a little bit there trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> so it just, you know, Firefox just went and, you know, crashed. It's cool. Once again, I only gave it one gig of RAM and I only gave it two cores. So if I am wanting, if you have more than that, if you have two gigs of RAM, you are going to be golden with this. You get the KDE, some of those KDE apps that are really great, like KDE Connect. You can edit video with this quite easily. You will be able to browse the web to your heart's content, and you should be able to do all of your office work, word processing, spreadsheets, easy on this. This is cool. I like this. I like this a lot. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you tell that I like this? I do want to show this real quick. You can go into the open box. Let me just show that to you. Preferences, LXQT settings, and then you can go to the open box settings. And they've got some themes here that you can see that change with the windows there. The old school clear looks, look at that. Great, simple, install new theme. I guess if you've downloaded a theme, you can use it. Yep, there you go. I don't have one, obviously. I do like this arc theme that they have. Uh, your fonts, resizing, mouse, okay. Your desktop, number of desktops, you can define that. You can make this on the bottom a little more. It looks, you're not gonna use four desktops, so there you go, now you've got two where your margins are, and then uh, controlling that dock. I can't tell you how cool I think this is. I know there are other, even more lightweight distributions, ones that are intended to just be on a flash drive, be able to do something safely and securely, or to work on devices giving you problems. But when it comes to a full-featured lightweight desktop environment, the Lubuntu team 
with that Ubuntu base and that LXQT desktop environment has really done a great job of giving you something cool and useful. If you had another gig of RAM, if you had two gigs of RAM, you would feel like you got a new system. But if you have one gig of RAM, you can still run this well. I don't know if it would work well at 512. You would be limited on um, some of the applications you could and couldn't use, depending on your use case. But for me, I have a web browser up and I have OBS up and I have, you know, I've got my video editor going and I'm a more of a multitask person and kind of guy. So I wanted to see what's the least I can have and get away with the most availability as far as functionality. Ubuntu, like it. If I were going to install a Ubuntu based system, I would consider this whether or not it was lightweight or not. Yes, if you're into eye candy, it's not, it doesn't have some of those things with the window management part of it, but it looks attractive to me. It looks straightforward and simple and clean and retro in a cool way. I like it. Hey, if you stuck through this video, thank you. Like and subscribe, you know, hit the notification bell, all of those things. I'll try to keep that stuff to a minimum, but it really does help. Thank you. And I hope to see you next time.